Hey guys, Mike for Sim Racing 604, and I'm super excited to announce that my podcast is now available on most major podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Overcast. Uh, just give a search for Simply Talking with 604 and you should find it. Uh, I am really excited about this for a number of reasons. Um, I think it's going to be good. What holds me back is time, you know, recording B-roll, editing video, that kind of thing uh, really takes the time. I have more ideas than I'm able to put down in video form, so hopefully audio podcasting will work. I've also been told I have a good voice for audio podcasting as well as a good face for audio podcasting and good video editing skills for audio podcasting. So this should be a natural fit. Um, so I've already got two episodes up there, one with Jake from GP Laps, another one with Jimmy Broadbent, and I'm going to give you a little teaser of that interview right after this. Um, so you can e either search that uh, sim simply talking with 604, or you can follow the links in the description of this video uh, to find that. Give a follow if you're interested in that. I'm planning on using the platform to do reviews, uh, to tutorials, that kind of thing. I've got a lot of exciting guests uh, coming up. Nobody I can talk about at this point, but uh, two confirmed that are super, super exciting to talk to and I uh, can't wait for that. So there'll be a lot more uh, with Simply Talking with 604. So uh, enjoy this teaser of my Jimmy Broadbent talk and uh, give a follow on your podcast platforms and enjoy. How far do you think uh, sim racing will creep into the sort of sphere of real world racing? And let me give you some sort of context for how I came about this question. I remember when the big thing happened in 2020, I remember turning on the TV and seeing uh, yourself and uh, I think there was a few real world F1 drivers playing F1 and it, it got on TV and it's just like, wow, these two spaces are merging. And then of course with ACC being played as part of the the, uh, you know, real world GT3 series yeah. um, and, you know, drivers able to score points. It's like sim racing is is growing and it's creeping into that real world sphere. Are they two things like is, are, are we as close as we're ever going to get to marrying them? Or do you think that sort of joining of the two sides, uh, virtual and real racing will continue to be more and more uh, sort of overlapping or, or what are your thoughts? It's it's interesting that because you know I've 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 been to some of those um, the, the the pretty well challenged stuff and I and I and I've seen um, I've seen some of those sim racing competitions and the drivers getting involved and you know being there and um, it's been pretty damn cool to see people take it that seriously because when when they do it there it's all on location but they all have their engineers there and their ear all like being like trying to they treat like a real race but. Um, I, I also wonder, like maybe the more cynical side of me, things like we've already gone past the peak, um, which was during lockdown, um, and that was just true necessity, right? Because like there was nothing else anyone could do. Um, in in my sort of in my experience, especially at the lower level in motorsport, like in the club racing that I've been doing, um, it's still very much a novelty. You know, still like, oh, you're the sim guy, are you? And then like, you know, I, I went, went to a time attack round, and someone gave me a sticker saying like, "Don't worry, I've done this before on the PlayStation." And I was like, I laughed. I thought it was funny, but it's that's sort of still like the attitude towards it right. in like the in in the in the lower the lower things. But like, it's great to see F1 esports, for example, getting bigger and bigger and becoming its own thing. You know, um, same with um, with Gran Turismo when we do our events. You know, we have so many people turn up. Um, so many big names. I, I know we did. Uh, we had the one at Monaco, of course, with the Espan on there, who I think was meant to be there. But then I turned around and Alan McNish was in the audience. And I'm like, what? Like, and I went to go talk to him, but I can't. It's sad. Um, so for, for those things, I think that in the grand in the grand scale, I think people are still looking and are still interested. I just think that um, it may be that outside the top 10 percent people all seem to be maybe convinced and brought in and that's that's where i see sort of where my like where my role lies now um I, my imaginary role is wherever i am is <laughs> to try and try and make people see this as a useful thing you know um i wouldn't have won the championship with gordy if i hadn't done any of this 100 percent and um and also that it isn't just like this novelty for kids you know i, I think it is still this massive untapped resource um, and people are trying to tap it most sport games try to tap it and